Well, it's been quite an evening in our top story tonight. Much of the KWW viewing area has seen this afternoon's severe weather roar, roar in and come across our viewing area in a very, very big way. Here's the video right here I want to show everyone. Abby. Yeah, here's some video. It was taken by our reporter, Ashley Neighbor. Now, she's safe inside when she took this, but you can see oh, the yeah, wind is just whipping the open area. doors and blowing around trees out this is a laundromat that's behind me, and I talked to a man who was renting two units attached to this building on the back side of it. Uh, he and other people who live in the area think what happened was the front half of the roof snapped back onto the back half of the roof. I thought it was a construction site when I drove by it earlier. I had to come back and uh, see that that actually wasn't true. Well, as the state of Iowa enters day four on the road to recovery following Monday's devastating storms, there has been some progress in the cleanup, but there is a long way to go. Now, to give you an understanding of the scope of the problems today, the combined utility companies mm. are reporting roughly 200,000 people are currently without power. As the situation right now, we're going to break down those numbers for you here in just a moment. But first of all, let's go to the heart of the damage from yesterday's storms. That's Lynn County and the Cedar Rapids area, where Governor Kim Reynolds today came to town to Lynn County to tour the community of Marion and toured other parts of Iowa to see the destruction firsthand. The governor also providing an update out of Des Moines earlier this morning, describing some of the destruction while saying that help from Iowa is definitely on the way. And she did issue a disaster proclamation for 13 Iowa counties. Abby and Ron, I am live here in Czech Village. A couple of hour, hours ago, I spoke with public safety, and they believe that 8 out of 10 homes here in Cedar Rapids have sustained damage. Alliant tells me they are actively working to restore power. Now, here's some video that I shot just a couple hours ago earlier today as Alliant crews were out working. A spokeswoman tells me 200,000 customers are still without service. They're creating restoration plans right now, but it could be several days before power is, resp is restored, especially in rural areas. Live from News 7 KWWL, we've got you covered. This is KWWL News at 6. Tonight, we continue to monitor Iowa's road to recovery after Monday's storm. You're getting a live look right now over Cedar Rapids from the KWWL drone. It has been four days since the storm swept through our state. Thousands are still feeling the effects. Look at all of the damage you are seeing in that neighborhood alone. A sirens will sound tonight if possible storms produce winds over 40 miles per hour because of the debris and residents without power. And good evening, everyone. I'm Ron Steele. And I'm Abby Turpin. Thank you for joining us. And yes, our top story tonight, Iowans still reeling and picking up the pieces from Monday's derecho. Tonight here at 6 o'clock live, we have Team 7 coverage as Iowans work on their road to recovery, bouncing back from the storm on Monday. Storm Track 7 reporter Vinny Lowry is in Cedar Rapids, and reporters Diego Hernandez and Daniel Perot tonight are in Lynn County in the community of Mary. Yesterday's storms brought winds up to and over 100 miles per hour. Multiple houses were bashed in from fallen trees, bricks still falling off buildings, power is out all over the area, and even cell phone service is hard to find. Gas stations did just start opening up with lines growing up and down surrounding streets. KWWR reporter Daniel Perot here in the town of Marion this morning. We are at City Square Park in downtown here and we are a couple days after Monday's storm here people still assessing the damage this is the park I'm going to show you what we're seeing here this is a giant tree that came down here in City Square Park took out part of the roof of the pavilion as you can see it was a nice park area for rental and the tree also uprooted took out parts of the sidewalk as well we see a couple picnic tables that have been crushed by the falling tree, parts of the roof there. You can see the rest of the park is littered with trees down, fallen limbs. Other parts, there's some, what looks like insulation from a building here. Uh, giant tree branches that have come down uh, from Monday's storm. It is now entering day five after the storm. City officials have still not been able to get to this area a common area here center of town off of 7th avenue here in marion for many people here power is still also out uh that includes from a 
Senior Center just down the road here. Power out for them as well. I just talked to the mayor here. The mayor says their buildings in and around here, there are several brick old buildings here suffered extensive damage, many roofs gone. They are concerned that the buildings may be complete losses, that the buildings might topple over and uh, the roofs may come caving in. Meanwhile, we are learning State Farm has had more than 23,000 claims, both home and auto, filed in the state since August 10th. Of course, that's the day the derecho hit. Now, you're taking a look at just some of that damage from our KWWL drone. Really, this is when we can see the magnitude of what has been experienced. Now, just a reminder, the numbers we're talking about here are for just State Farm customers. Now, this is over the town of Keystone, as you can see right there. And again, this is a live look. Look at some of those bins. And it's certainly a situation where they need help. And we've been talking about this a lot. You can help. There are many ways listed on our website, kwwl.com. I'm going to go ahead and turn the camera around. We are in one of Cedar Rapids neighborhoods. And as you can see, trees are still in the roadways. It is in their personal property. I talked to uh, community members and they have experienced so much tree debris. And as you can see, there are just trees all the way down this street right here, covering their lawns on top of cars right here. I have seen a lot of damage to their roofs. A lot of community members have said that they have been unable to access their own doorways even depending on how bad it is. All right, for everyone at home, we want you to stop what you're doing and take a look at this. You are seeing infrared camera shots from our Storm Chaser vehicle right now. You can see these images as we drive around the west side of Cedar Rapids right off of 380. And here is why there is a curfew. Look at that, those trees lying in the road. And you can't see them until you are right on top of them at some times. Hazards in the roadway as workers continue to try and clear the debris all throughout the day. So please stay inside. Again, that curfew in Cedar Rapids taking place from 10 p.m. until 6 a.m. Now we'll turn to our full forecast with Storm Track 7 Chief Meteorologist Mark Schnackenberg. Still talking about all those outages still in place. I want to show you a time lapse here of the outage uh, as it moved on through the region. So this is a time lapse. So we're in the middle of the time lapse here. And the bright, dark, darker the red colors, the more outages there are. But the biggest disappointment to some folks is the mayor's response to the derecho. It's been eight days since the storm hit Iowa and with no electricity to power lines wrapped around tree debris, the derecho has left the city of Hiawatha devastated. But instead of seeing urgent response, some locals say it's been quite the opposite. And 25 year resident Doug Dick says they are looking for leadership. Mayor tells us he doesn't even know we have a problem. So that told us that our own city didn't even care about us. Right now with me to talk about the circumstances of his city is Mayor Bill Bennett himself. He's been with us all morning long to talk about his perspective of the math aftermath. So thank you for being here all morning long. I know it's been a tough situation for you guys as a city, but I just want to ask you, with the damages that are here, what is your plan going forward? While the storm is over, the struggles are not. And tonight, dozens of people in Cedar Rapids are spending the night outside in tents. Storm Track 7's Kristen Cross joins us live right now from the Cedar Terrace Apartments with much more on this story. Kristen. Abby, yes, as you mentioned, some of these families have been out here for six days ever since this storm hit, waiting for help that some worry now may never come. I knew somebody. I knew him. When Monday's storm hit Cedar Terrace Apartments, it took the complex's roof with it, leaving dozens of families homeless. Nobody had to go. They don't have no money either. We don't have no money. We live in paycheck to paycheck. And even though there are shelters set up in the city, for some of these families, that's not an option if they want to stay together. Because my brother, he has uh, four kids, us, you know, six. My sister up there, three. So you couldn't go to a so shelter altogether? We, we couldn't. So for days, young children, their parents and grandparents have camped out all night and all day. It's really hot. That's why we're in the shade right now. And they say city leaders are nowhere to be found. 
I didn't see any official elected to come here to see if we live here. But that doesn't mean they haven't had help. In fact, everything they have now, from food to water to shelter, is thanks to their neighbors. These people are out here with kids. We know they have children over here, and we need to get them tents. Becca Johnson is one of many people from all over Iowa stepping in to help. I drove out from Anamosa. I have not seen this sort of thing other than in a combat zone. It's disappointing, and it's angry for a person to have to come from Des Moines to have to help people, and it shouldn't have to take normal average people just come come and help the government should have done that from the jump this is our city this should be dealt with right away and it's we're now at a week and they're still living outside with the city about the conditions at cedar terrace no one was available to go on camera but they did tell us there are multiple shelters in place including the veterans building for people who are displaced they also said the red cross will shuttle people to the veterans center we did see the red cross here earlier today but that was for roughly half an hour to an hour handing out supplies we did not see them move any residents and we are still continuing to wait and hear more details about what the future is for these residents the property manager also spoke with us says she is working on getting them their security deposit back. Reporting live from Cedar Rapids, News 7 KWWL, I'm Kristen Crowley. Abby, back to you. Kristen, thank you very much. And as a reminder, the citywide curfew for Cedar Rapids does remain in effect. It began just four minutes ago at 10 o'clock and it runs through six tomorrow morning. Ron and Abby, this morning we discovered that a tree had fallen into a church. This is Marion Christian Church on 10th and McGowan Boulevard in Marion. But if you just take a look behind me, the tree was only feet away from the building before it fell. Ron Steele joins us tonight live from Cedar Rapids in the heart of the damage from last Monday's storm. Ron, tell us what's the scene there this evening. Yeah, Ivy, I'll tell you, yeah, Colin's going to have to wait another day because uh, some things just come ahead of what we're doing here at the station, and one of those is storm coverage. I'm right now, as you can see behind me, I'm at Cedar Terrace, the big apartment complex out in the southwest part of the town. In fact, we're just off of uh, 12th Avenue Southwest. Let me just step back real quickly. The residents here, as you mentioned, some have been sleeping in tents. They've had no electricity, a lot of damage out here. The roofs are off on many of these uh, big buildings out here at Cedar Terrace. And then there's a line where storm victims are, are lining up and waiting to come inside to an air-conditioned room. Look at this. This is Iowa Strong right here, people. So this is where people who need the supplies are lining up to go inside. There was a lot more people here about an hour ago. It has slowed down a lot, and I heard they are about to close for the day. They planned... Uh, they planned to close at four today, but they just had so much, so many people dropping stuff off that they stayed open a little bit longer. Um, people are still coming, um, and I asked, okay, if people want to volunteer, uh, how can they do it? Um, you know, starting tomorrow, not today, because I, they are trying to wind down for today. Abby, more volunteers for sure. That's what I keep hearing from everyone. Many of the volunteers here in Palo are residents of the town who, after cleaning up their own damage, went out to help their neighbors. And now they're all tired and they need help from outside people coming in willing to give up their time. Now, dumpsters at City Hall are full, and there's a fire on the outside of town that's burned around the clock since Tuesday, and it's fueled by nothing but the trees that couldn't withstand those hurricane force winds on Monday. You know, power, as we mentioned, still out for much of the Cedar Rapids and Marion areas as crews work round the clock, literally, trying to get the lights back on. Residents of a senior complex are certainly in need of help. Some have been without their oxygen tanks for several days now. Yeah, Storm Track 7 reporter Daniel Perot spoke with residents at the Oak Village Senior Residences, and he's now live from Marion. Yeah, Ron and Abby, residents say they feel like they're being left in the dark, both without power and with no direction to turn from management. I do want to show you this video that I shot earlier today. It's in the stairwell of the building. You can see light there, but that is from my camera. Without it, it is pitch black and nearly impossible to navigate. Up until yesterday, many residents did not have flashlights. At least two residents have been sent to the hospital after falling going up or down the stairs. Two others have been taken for lack of oxygen as well. 
Right now you're seeing some video of the damage at the Westdale Court Apartments near Westdale Mall in Cedar Rapids. Look at that. You can see the roof almost completely blown off and most of the exterior walls destroyed. Right now we want to go ahead and send things to Storm Track 7 meteorologist Joy Bettenhausen. She is standing by with details on that new report. Yes, thank you, Abby. We definitely saw a lot of damage here. You can see from Cedar Rapids, estimations of 140 miles per hour just based off the removal of that roof of the apartment complex on the southwest side of Cedar Rapids, as well as that extensive damage to exterior walls and to some interior walls as well. I am uh, near Lindale Mall in uh, northeast Cedar Rapids where um, I was just driving by and, and I was wondering if people were waiting in line to like charge their phones at the mall. And I was like, what are you guys waiting for? And they're like, Chick-fil-A. And lo and behold, uh, I'm talking to people, they're waiting somewhere between 45 minutes and an hour uh, to get Chick-fil-A. Um, there's also a Panda Express down there and an Arby's. Uh, where there's a really long line for both those as well. Um, there's a lot of people saying that they haven't had a real meal since Monday afternoon. Uh, people are saying they've been eating peanut butter sandwiches and chips, and so they're more than willing to wait 45 minutes for a sandwich, is, is what I'm hearing. So you see the little discoloration in there. I know it, it may be very subtle, but it is enough to notice that right in here, and here's Des Moines, here's Waterloo, and right in here, sort of like a little lighter color green and a little lighter color green, that is all the corn that is knocked down. So you can see how widespread this is. About 20 volunteers came out here today to the Timber Ridge Trailer Park just south of Shellsburg. They had a lot of heavy equipment to deal with that excessive amount of debris, but the organizer I spoke with said the most important things were hands and rakes. It's almost like where do you start? A need for volunteers only surpassed by the need for monetary relief. They don't qualify for FEMA as of this date, so they're missing funds to get into a safe home especially when they've got kids. Until hours later, residents fell just miles short of individual assistance in Lynn County. The governor's office announcing late Tuesday, Benton County joins Down Lynn County in receiving individual assistance. In the last three weeks, where have you guys lived? Right there. Okay. Yep. Wow. Those trailers, now uninhabitable, leave residents living in tents and pop-up campers. Would you like some bread? Are you okay if I set it in here? All right, let me grab one more set for you, dear. Well, just under a month after the derecho hit on August 10th in the Lynn County area, thousands of people are still in need to help replenish their refrigerators and pantries. And today, Haycap and hy V partnering to distribute goods to more than 1,500 cars in a drive through food pantry held right outside Veterans Memorial Stadium. You look around here and you see how many people are in line, how many people have come and waited for hours to get this. Uh, I think it's a very clear indicator that this uh, community has got a long way to go in its recovery. And again, they need as much help as they can get. And we're so happy to be here to try to make their life a little easier, healthier, and happier. Well, it's now been one month since the derecho tore through Iowa. Yeah, causing severe damage to homes, businesses, crops, and trees across the entire state. And take a look at this. This is video from the storm as it swept through Cedar Rapids or right after there on August 10th. You can see the damage and destruction of the downtown area there in Cedar Rapids. Car windows blown out, wood, tree debris, everything covering the roads. And here's a look at the damage from Marion just a couple days later. Now, debris scattered across that community. Marion, along with Cedar Rapids and Tama, among others, would issue nightly curfews for a while so crews would be able to clean up the aftermath of the storms. And Tama also had to declare a state of emergency following the storm. The mayor would also request no outside visitors to come to Tama while the cleanup process was underway. Iowa Governor Kim Reynolds and Lieutenant Governor Adam Gregg would also tour the storm damage as well. And the derecho knocking out power to more than 450,000 Iowans in the blink of an eye. Here's a look at the power outage map from August 10th, one month ago. And you can see just how many counties were experiencing significant power outages. And just this afternoon, Governor Kim Reynolds extending the disaster proclamation for the impacted counties. This continues to allow state resources to be used to respond and recover in recovery efforts from the effects of that severe weather. 
Well, over 100 families a day are still going to the Iowa Derecho Relief Center to fulfill their basic needs. The center has now moved to a new location and has been in operation for 29 days. Help out your neighbor, love on each other, that's all you can do. The relief site was still in action today with volunteers coming in from Ohio and Kansas. With many people having to pay for expensive repairs and tree removal, the budget for food, cleaning supplies and toiletries has certainly tightened. Raymond Sedell says that this is not going away and he will not give up. And we've been saying it all day. Today marks one month since the derecho, and you can still donate to the United Way to help in disaster recovery efforts. That information is available here on your screen. Let's take a look back now on the images of the aftermath through the lens of our KWWL drone. A Cedar Rapids nonprofit organization that helps care for children in foster care was yet another victim of the derecho. And now they're reaching out to anyone who can help. KWWL's Diego Hernandez is now live in Cedar Rapids with more details on what this organization still needs. Diego. I'm at the Families Helping Families building in Cedar Rapids, and where I'm standing right now is the spot where a clothing storage shed was, and it used to be, but it was knocked over by the derecho. Now, the one right next to me here is exactly how it looked, but the reason why this one is still standing was because a tree had fallen on top of it and kept it in place. Now, what they lost was most of their winter clothes storage, and what Families Helping Families does is provide children in foster care clothes that they may they need at no cost. The owner of Willie Ray's Q Shack has been handing out free food almost every day and today teamed up with the Advocates for Social Justice. Now the Q Shack is located on Blair's Ferry Road in Cedar Rapids but fairly wanted to get closer to the community. Burgers, ribs, beans and more coming straight off the grill and into people's hands. Some even trying to donate money but fairly refuses. He says the support that he has been getting from the community is unbelievable. You have a passion for people and you just have to do the right thing and it doesn't matter how long we do it, we're just going to do it until everyone needs it and it could be six months from now, someone needs something, we still want to be there. We want to be that rely call to make sure everyone has what they need. Great person. Now, Fairley says that he plans on continuing to hand out food for at least a few more weeks. Also in Cedar Rapids, the tree debris drop-off site at 1st Street Northwest and I Avenue is anticipated to close by the end of the day tomorrow. However, residents can still leave tree debris curbside for free pickup by the city or take debris to the Lynn County Solid Waste Agency. So far, the city has picked up more than 100,000 tons of tree debris and completed a first pass on 26% of the city. Well, the August 10th derecho now considered the costliest thunderstorm in U.S. history. Data from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration point to the storm resulting in $7.5 billion in damages. KWWL's Diego Hernandez met with Cedar Rapids city leaders earlier today to talk about how the tally could only go up from here. That's right, $7.5 billion in damages as the storm ran its course through several states besides Iowa. And the city of Marion has just began the first day of a final pass to collect storm debris from residential areas. The estimated cost the city has already put into that collection is estimated between 20 and $23 million. 
Well, while some parts of eastern Iowa are experiencing the beautiful autumn season as usual, areas impacted by the derecho tell a different story. A historic bed and breakfast lost nearly 30 170-year-old trees, and the city of Cedar Rapids is still covered in debris. KWWL photojournalist Kennedy DeRate has the story. Cedar Rapids has always just been gorgeous in the fall with the large maples and oaks and so many species that are yellow, red, you know, it's, it's always been so gorgeous. We had uh, a wonderful canopy of spreading hardwoods and every year it was a little overwhelming, but you just rake it up. In Iowa and in the Midwest, fall means the change of seasons. I think about walking in some of the large parks in Cedar Rapids, like Ellis Park or Jones and Daniels Park. They'll never be the same. This property was lot line to lot line destruction, just tree wreckage. And in our Road to Recovery coverage, chainsaws can be heard carving away in downtown Marion as artists spend hours creating sculptures out of the derecho debris. So a group of high school students are raising money for trees forever with this project. Students with the Iowa Big program came up with the idea. Chainsaw artists will be carving all next week at City Square Park, sculpting wood into eagles, bears, and much more. Well, it's been more than two months now since the derecho hit eastern Iowa, leaving roofs and homes damaged. That's right, Abby. In fact, tonight, we want to step out of the cities and look at the impact that this amazing storm has had on some of our farmers. And in some ways, the overall crop loss is simply unbelievable. With the harvest upon us, KWW reporter Taylor Vessel gives us this update. We don't have a lot to harvest. Brian Vindis' family has been on this farm for nearly a century. As you can see by the KWWL drone, the derecho that struck eastern Iowa in August punched a number of holes in their operations. My brother, I, and my nephew have 1,350 acres of corn. We're harvesting 120. 120. Is all we're combining out of the 1350. The latest numbers show that windstorm destroyed more than 800,000 oh, crops statewide. I mean, you spent all year growing this. I mean, you planted it, you raised it, you, you want to go harvest it. But now you're just tearing it up and you're thinking, oh, I could harvest that. And then you drive a little further and say, no, I can't. The latest crop report shows 90% of soybeans and 65% of corn harvested. While that's a positive, in terms of damages, corn took the brunt. New for you tonight right here at 6 o'clock, a local Marion man right here in eastern Iowa was cleaning up recent derecho debris. He came up with the idea to brand a design on certain pieces of wood and turn those into keepsakes. I did one post on Facebook and I was overwhelmed with the number of people who reached out to me. By the way, now with more than 1,000 of these keepsakes having been designed, his brand is worn down and he's waiting for a new one to come in. The design is really quite simple. The outline of the state of Iowa along with the words derecho 2020.